Borderlands is the brand new sci-fi action comedy film based off the video game of the same name. This film was written and directed by Eli Roth, and it was produced by Avi Arid. And I got to tell you guys right here and now, it's not the best movie, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, this is one of those movies that went through such a large amount of development hell. It was announced quite literally nine years ago in August of 2015. Avi Arid was producing a lot of us, of course. We remembered Avi Arid, who was the, I don't think he does it anymore, but he was the big CEO and chairman of Marvel way back in the early 2000s, I believe in the 90s as well. And Eli Roth, a lot of us know, especially myself, 20 years ago, he put out uh, Cabin Fever, which was a big hit. It launched his career. And he was someone who was known for making just about everything rated R, full of gore, a lot of just incorrect kind of stuff. And when I found out that they were finally making this into a feature film and it was being produced by Lionsgate, who again gave Eli Roth his boost 20 years ago when he did Cabin Fever, I thought to myself, we're finally going to get a decent film. We're finally going to get a decent R-rated, com not comic book, forgive me, video game based film that's probably going to be in the style of the somewhat recent Mortal Kombat film. I am one of the few people who preferred that to the 1995 cult classic original, which Paul W.S. Anderson did. And to my absolute shock, a month ago, when it was shown what the movie was going to be rated, which was PG-13, I wanted to kick a hole in the damn wall. Because I said to myself, why hasn't Lionsgate learned their lesson? You know, they're very much ahead of the curve, but also behind it. It's like, as they say, as they take two steps forward, they take three steps back. As of this recording, unless someone can correct me, Lionsgate is the only major studio that does not have a streaming platform. I do believe that some of their titles are available on streaming services, but they don't have a full-on streaming service. They've done a lot of third-party releases on Blu-ray films that were put out by the now-defunct Summit Features. They also are the distributor of uh, Blu-rays and physical media for A24. They're still one of the very few, from what I understand, uh, proponents of copyright protection on physical media. And yet, they still can't get a grasp on keeping things what they should be rated. I mean, when they put out the two, the first two Expendables films, they were a success. They got mixed reviews from the critics, but the audience enjoyed them. And that was the intended target. And then when they put out Expendables 3 a decade ago, they made it PG-13. And it bit them in the ass. And apparently they didn't learn their lesson because how are you going to take a series that's, I'm sorry to say, based off a video game that's so damn old that I can remember it, for example, in 2008, 2009, something to that effect. I can remember this video game was brand new when we were still advertising the PlayStation 3 when I worked at Blockbuster Video. That's how old Borderlands is. So you have something like that going against it. I understand that the series has had other subsequent video games. There's still a rather large audience that plays these games and still references it and things like that. But when you have Amazon Prime's shows like Fallout or Peacock's Twisted Metal, which are definitely big, you know, infirmature or you know, R-rated, you know, kind of material, and you have these mini-series which are tearing up the ratings and getting such big fans, you would have thought somebody like Lionsgate, who is well-known for getting their roots in horror and thrillers, wouldn't do such a silly thing like water down that, because that's not their brand, that's not who they are. Most of their films are rated R. They've had a handful of things that were PG and PG-13, but... If you can remember, as far back as I believe it was, and I, I don't think it was until 2006 or 2007 when they finally changed their company logo 
from the lightning and thunder clouds and stuff like that. I mean, they were, you know, I remember I have those old VHSs and DVDs. They always advertise things like House of a Thousand Corpses, Ginger Snaps, Cabin Fever, things like that. They were much like New Line Cinema. They were built on horror. And I'm going in so hard about this company because their one big saving grace is those John Wick films, which are rated R. And when I saw the trailer to Borderlands, finally, about six months ago, and I saw that it was directed by Eli Roth, and I saw the cast that was in it, I thought to myself, oh, so this is essentially Lionsgate's answer to Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's going to be rated R. There's even that bit that they show in all the trailers where that vehicle drives through that big tentacle monster and the blood is digitally colored black, something that Hollywood has been doing for over 20 years now. And I thought, okay, you got Eli Roth, whose movie that he had earlier back in 2023, Thanksgiving and stuff like that. You would have easily said, oh, pff, there's no point saying this film is not yet rated. You know it's going to be rated R. Well, I was wrong. It was PG-13. And the cast, God bless them. I mean, you have Jack Black, who voices the character Claptrap, which looks identical to the video game, the character. You have Edgar Ramirez as the main villain that's in the film. Uh, I believe his name was uh, Atlas. And then you've also got Academy Award winner, uh, what's her name? My gosh, why is it escaping me? Oh, Kate Blanchett, that's right, forgive me. She plays Lilith. You've got recent Oscar winner, Jamie Lee Curtis, who's also in the film. You have Gina Gershon, who I adore. You have Ariana Greenblatt as that young little girl with the bunny ears and the bazooka who says it's bigger. And then you have Florian Muntanel. Now, Florian Muntanel, he plays the character Krieg. Krieg is the character that you have seen on all the covers of the game. And, of course, the always lovable, if at times a little annoying, Kevin Hart plays Roland. I'm not going to lie. I am not going to lie. That's about the best shape I've ever seen Kevin Hart in with his little beret and his little black mercenary outfit. He wasn't looking too shabby. And that's the problem. The world that this film has, it looks solid and established and lived in. I am going to give some positive critiques here on some of these things I'm about to talk about. So the costume design and the world building and stuff like that, the environments, the vehicles, the weapons, it feels like there's something there, but it's... Like I said, two steps forward, three steps back. It's taken away when you have routine dialogue, scenes that are so rushed that the narrative feels so sloppy, and things that don't amount to shit because of the constant cutting. It's my understanding that the movie was shot in 2021 in Budapest during you know the COVID-19 pandemic, and then it had some reshoots earlier in 2023 by Tim Miller, because Eli Roth was still working on Thanksgiving at that time for its obvious November release. And you could totally tell where they cut things out to give it a PG-13. Right from the jump, we have the narration by Lilith, again by Kate Blanchett. When someone approaches her in a bar, she's like, piss off. You could totally tell it was a reshoot, because you could easily tell she wanted to say fuck off. Because a lot of characters say dialogue that feels like, okay, we've got a PG-13 version, we got an R-rated version, and they went for the safer one. A lot of the violence that's in the film, it gets away with being a bit bloody and a bit splattery because it's not actual human blood, it's creature blood. Kind of like the same kind of thing happened when Alien vs. Predator came out 20 years ago. We thought that was going to be rated R, but that was actually kind of, in a way, the beginning of the end in terms of films that were generally R-rated getting the PG-13 treatment. And that movie got away with getting a 13 because a lot of the blood and gore was green. It was like, you know, the inside of a glow stick. It wasn't human red blood. We had a few sprays of blood in AVP, but most of the blood... That is seen in Borderlands, like I said, it's from various creatures and stuff like that. And even once we get this entire mercenary group together, five human beings plus one robot, if you will, rather than being a fun, silly romp, it just feels like they're going through the motions. And on the technical aspects as well, 
The CGI at times can look pretty horrible. There's a chase sequence about 30 minutes into the film where you could tell that people were just riding on a green screen and the CGI with the way the vehicles fly around and drive through the terrain looks really, really hokey. And other times it looks halfway decent. So it's a mixed bag on that level. And by the way, because as you guys know, I always talk about sound. The sound design is dynamite. You know, I saw this in Dolby Cinema, which uses Dolby Atmos sound. Towards the beginning of the movie, whenever we see the very young Tiny Tina, that's, of course, Ariana Greenblatt, the girl with the bunny ears, she turns around as a loud slam hits on the door whenever she's trying to get captured in this space station. And a lot of the gunshots and crashes and explosions, they really rocked the seats and everything. It was very, very bold. You know, if there's any one thing I want to add, just going back a touch about Lionsgate's physical media, they are one of the very few studios, and I do commend them for this, for not treating people like myself who don't have 4K Blu-rays and stuff with downgraded audio. Most of these major studios like Disney or 20th Century Studios, also Disney, if you will, and Universal Studios, they'll generally put the Dolby Atmos or DTSX positional audio only on their 4K Blu-rays, and they'll give their Blu-rays the downgraded Dolby True HD 7.1 or DTS HD 7.1 when even the size of those files is enough to fit on a Blu-ray disc. From what I recall, Warner Brothers, Paramount, and Lionsgate are the three major studios that will still offer Dolby Atmos audio with traditional 1080p Blu-rays. So just want to say thank you to Lionsgate for that, by the way, because like I said, the film is such a mixed bag because you have moments of decent action, decent production design, decent world building. There's something fucking there when you watch this movie. But it's just taken away whenever you can tell where the cuts are made and the action feels a little bit slapdash. And for a film that has such a big amount of video games and so much lore and so much time has passed since it originally started... We could have had so much better. And instead, we've gotten yet another video game adaptation that has proven that it is just not a very successful model translating video game to the big screen. You know, for another example of the PG-13 rating, Jimmy O'D, who was the stunt coordinator of this film, he stated that there were scenes of heads being blown up and feet being cut off. I mean, that's right up, you know, the wheelhouse of... Uh, Eli Roth. And I can remember most of his films are rated R or they've been trimmed down to an R rating. Hell, this is not the first time he has worked with Kate Blanchett or Jack Black. Let us not forget people. Just shy of eight years ago, Eli Roth directed, I believe he also directed it for uh, uh, Lionsgate, The House with the Clock in Its Walls. And that featured Kate Blanchett and Jack Black, hence the reason I'm sure of the recasting. And I could have sworn that that film was rated PG-13 and got re-rated down to a PG. Maybe it's the Mandela effect, I'm not sure. But the point is, it doesn't make sense, again, when you have a video game series who's, from what I recall, three video games in plus multiple expansions and stuff that are all rated M for Mature, and you have an infirmature director, and you have an infirmature studio, and then we're saddled with a lousy ass PG 13. Because it's just not fair. It really isn't. And I know I'm really ranting on about this. I'll tell you like this in terms of the characters and the costumes and the world building and the visual effects, they're all passable. I don't think this movie is a complete piece of trash, I don't think it's very good either. But I'll tell you this much. In conclusion, it's a hell of a lot better than Madam Web. As of this recording, it has a 10%. I'm talking about Borderlands now. I know I go all over the place. It has a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. It did have a 0%, then a 3%, then a 9 and now it's a 10 And on CinemaScore, it has a D plus from the audience. And in terms of my grade, 
I'm officially going to give Borderlands the... No, nah, you know what? I'll give it that exact same grade. You know what? I'm going to be fair. Fuck it. Yes, there it is. Borderlands gets a D+. Plus. It is watchable. Let it be clear. It is watchable. And if we get a director's cut or an extended cut or an unrated cut, something like that in the future, something a la Snyder cut kind of thing, I feel there is room for improvement and I feel... Like, this movie could have been something real fucking special, but it sadly wasn't. Instead, we more or less have a New Age Super Mario Brothers movie. And I'm not talking about the uh, animated one that came out a few years back. No, no, no. I'm talking about that shit fest from 1993, which, for whatever reason, got a cult following. But let that review stand. I do think Borderlands is at least watchable. Has decent technical aspects. It's at least worth a rental, at least in the realm of what could have been. It's not something that you necessarily have to skip if you have nothing else better to do and you want to take the teens to go see this. They'll be just fine with it. There is no F words, not even a single one, but you'll definitely see the seams that are very obviously showing and it could have been a whole lot better. But honestly, it could have also been a whole lot worse. That's the best way I can put it. And never forget, people, the cinema is the perfect arena for conflict. And in the case of Borderlands, to my shock and delight and even surprise, everybody was on their best behavior. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to my review of Borderlands. It's still in theaters if you absolutely dare to check it out and Spend your money and your two hours, go for it. I personally think you should just rent it, see it on streaming for curiosity's sake, at the very most. Um, You guys continue to support filmmakers like Eli Roth. He is well known for recording commentaries on all of his features. I wonder what he's going to have to say about this one. I'm really curious. That would be about the only time I would ever listen to what he has to say or rather watch this movie again in any sort of aspect, but there you go. You guys take care, and as always, I will see you at the movies. Take care, everybody.